Hi, thanks for listening. Um, what's the worst thing, the worst two things that could ever come together? That's right, feminism and Victoria's Secret. It's happened, right? This is this is real, by the way, right? Because um, I thought it was a joke at first. It's not a joke. Feminism and Victoria's Secret, hand in hand. The two worst things to come together since... The last two worst things to come together. Anyway, it's um, Pink Loves Consent. Join the consent revolution. It's a revolution because we've, we as humans have never done that consent thing before, you know. Pink Loves Consent is more than a style. It's a revolution. Pink Loves Consent is our newest collection of flirty, sexy and powerful statements that remind pink panty wearers and their partners to practice consent. Whew, thank fuck for that, because I forgot all about that consent thing. It was me just going around just raping random women. And <sighs> thank God for, for these people getting together like this and reminding people like me that you have to get consent. Consent is a verbal agreement. Say it out loud, no body language about how and when people are comfortable having sex aye, and how to make them not comfortable is to openly ask for consent ask first no means no and let's talk about sex remind us that communication is the key to good sex pick your favourite slogan or write your own whatever you do remember to practice consent remember you must have the sex the way we want then we loved styles that were all about rape culture. Now we love styles that are all about consent. Catch the changes hitting stores this holiday season. You see, then we loved, now we love. See, because they, they speak for everyone, you know. But they've got examples of uh, what we used to love, because that was rape culture, and what we love now, you know, because, again, we can't think for ourselves. We have to be told what we love, right? What we used to love was the ones that said, no, then and now, no peaking, right? Totally harmless. Now, no means no. Seriously, I mean, look at look at that. A pair of knickers with the words "no means no" on it. You know, I mean, if I was with a woman and I got down to her knickers and they had that written on it, I would immediately turn into a, a David Bannatyne off Dragons Den. I'm out. Right away, I'm out. Get the fuck out. Get out. Get away from me, man. Because if a woman is wearing a pair of knickers that say no means no on it, you are going to get accused of rape. I guarantee it. Get the fuck away from her and don't let her near anything in your life again. Because you're going to get accused of rape. But your honour, it must have been rape. Because I was wearing these knickers and it says on them no means no. Brilliant. When it comes to sex, words like no are for setting boundaries, not flirting. The problem, across the country women are saying no and not being heard. Really? <laughs> Maybe it is because people, men and women alike, think that yes we know what people are. Thanks for clarifying that, but I think we can fucking suss out what people are. Think that words like no are for flirting and don't have much meaning. Who, who, who are you talking about? Stupid people. Kinda like the no in this no peeking pair of pink underwear. Cute, right? It's cute when young women spoke the word no as an invitation. It's cute when young women learn that pretending to not want sex is a way to flirt. Cute when their partners learn that no really means yes. Just young women. Is it just young women that wear these things? Yes. Right. And, and the no peeking could be um, literal. Maybe it's just as bad as these fucking consent ones, you know? God. The solution, the solution to people having a bit of flirty fun with their underwear is a boundary is not an invitation to try harder. It is something to be deeply heard and respected. Words like no and stop are not ways to flirt. If, not ways for you to flirt. If you want to have sex, go for it, but you must do it the way we want you to. Precisely, exactly the way we want you to. Otherwise you're a rapist. You don't need to pretend like you're not into sex because you're a woman. And if you don't want to have sex in any situation, that should always be respected no matter what. 
No means no. Oh, man. There's another pair of then and now. Then, it says, sure thing on it. Now, ask first. I mean... How sexy is that? How much is that going to put a man in the mood? Oh, down to her underwear, ask first. Oh, for fuck, oh, go away. Just, thanks for fucking taking the fun out of fucking sex. For God's sake, the one last thing we had left where we were allowed to have fun, you've taken the fucking fun out of that as well. Piss off. God. But this one, a uh, sure thing, you know. So, uh, if a woman chooses to wear them, because she's wanting them, she's buying them, she's choosing to wear them, She's encouraging rape. This is what happens when feminists do anything. They take the fun out of it, they, they destroy it, and they turn it all into rape. Everything. No vagina is a sure thing. Ask first. Yes, no fucking cock is a sure thing either. You fucking ask first. The problem, do we even need to say it? Printing the slogan, sure thing, Literally over women's vaginas. No, 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 no. It's on the knickers, it's not on the vaginas. You know, literally. D don't use that fucking word. Because when you literally use that word like that, you literally sound like a fucking moron. It's not on the vaginas at all. It's on the thing that's covering the vaginas. Fuck's sake. It sends the wrong message. I know, it sends this wrong message that they're just having a bit of fun in their sex lives. How fucking dare these... Fucking rape apologist scum women do that. In what situation in life is a vagina treated like a sure thing? We can think of one. Rape. Well, well of course you can think of one. Rape. Because that's all you ever fucking think about feminists. Excuse me, uh, do, do you have the correct time? Rape! Do you know when the, bus, the next bus is due? Rape! It's raining today. I thought it was going to be sunny today. Rape! The solution. No vagina is a sure thing. It doesn't matter if that person slow danced with you all night, if that woman is your girlfriend, if that man is in your bed, man? Vagina? If, that, if there's a man in my bed, he better have a fucking vagina. If your date is drunk. We believe that in every situation, every time, everyone gets to decide what happens to their body. Well, it sounds like you get to fucking decide what happens to everybody's fucking body. Don't treat people like a sure thing. Ask first. This is set. This is Victoria's Secret. This is Victoria's Secret. I'm serious. I think this will hurt their sales. One of the main reasons that sex remains taboo in our culture is that we are not supposed to talk about it. Says who? Although sex is everywhere, discussing sex openly and honestly is still rare. To you, in some situations, that makes sense. For example. Sex is usually an inappropriate topic for the family Thanksgiving dinner table. You don't know my family. However, the taboo against talking about sex sticks in situations where open conversations are not only appropriate, but also necessary. People who are having sex with each other need to be able to talk about it. They're just making rules for people's sex lives. But somehow many of us are more comfortable sleeping with someone, you mean having sex with someone, than talking to the person that we are sleep having sex with about sex. This is nobody's fault. It is ingrained in our sex-obsessed, sex-negative culture, leaving many people horny and confused. To move ourselves towards more healthy and self-actualized sex, we need to practice communication and consent. Self-actualized sex. I have to be honest, right? I haven't got a fucking clue what that means. I haven't got a clue. I don't know if I've been having self-actualized sex or not. Good sex is about good communication. Communicating our boundaries, needs and desires is hot. S seriously? Are you telling us it was hot now? Is there any chance, just any chance at all, we adults can decide for ourselves what we think is hot? We need a sexual revolution that makes practicing communication as ubiquitous as using a condom. Condom use was promoted for sexually active people in response to the AIDS epidemic in the 90s in order to prevent the transmission of HIV. Today, communication needs to be promoted among sexually active people. It needs to be because they want it to be. In response to the epidemic of rape. Epidemic of rape. Epidemic of rape. Epidemic's one of the feminists' favorite words. 
rape, assault and sexual violence. See, because there's an epidemic of rape, assault and sexual violence, you know. And, and there is in gender studies classes. Not in the real fucking world, there's not. In order to prevent unwanted sexual experiences, because if you wear knickers that say no means no, you won't be raped. Because a rapist will get to your underwear and go, oh no. She said no. Ah well, sorry, I was going to rape you, but turns out you're wearing that fucking indestructible underwear that I can't get past. You fucking clueless cunts. Just like pausing to put on a condom prevents STDs and a woman, eh, you know, getting child support from you for the next 18 fucking years of your life. Pausing to check in with your partner prevents unwanted sexual experiences. And nothing, nothing makes a woman hotter than pausing every fucking minute to say, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? And can I do that? And what's great about doing that is not only does it completely kill the fucking mood and make her not want to have sex with you ever again, but it can be completely forgotten about when she just decides to go, ah, uh, he raped me. But, but you give me consent 53,000 times because I kept asking like a fucking lunatic whether I could do different things or not and you said yes all the time. No, I didn't. I don't remember that. You're a rapist. So th this doesn't actually prevent false rape allegations or, or rape. Any woman that wears this underwear is going to accuse you of rape, whether you're a rapist or not. Although, although according to them, it's going to prevent rape. So they'll, they'll, they may get caught falsely accusing you of rape because they'll go, but your honour, I was wearing this underwear and the judge is going to go, hang on, that underwear prevents rape. Therefore, you couldn't have been raped. <sighs> the sexy benefits of good communication. When you're having sex with people, you can spend a lot of time wondering about what they're thinking. How do you know if they want to kiss you? How can you tell if they like what you're doing? Are they thinking what you're thinking? Do they want more? How do you know what they want? You ask them! You know, there's other ways. You know, there's noises, for example. You know, just, just for example. <sighs> It's no, nothing, they just drain the fun out of everything. Just out of everything. It is a complete and absurd myth that good sex happens without talking. No, it's not. That's not a myth. You've never had sex before. This is classic, this is just like the Christians, you know. People who do not have sex, not Christians, priests and stuff. People who do not have sex telling everybody else how they should have sex. The people who do this and organise this stuff, they've never had sex before. Because if they did, they would know that this constant need for consent would kill them out. They would know this. And they would know that in most sexual encounters, no verbal consent is given. None at all. It's all body language and actions. Fuck's sake, man. That through intuition and magic and maybe telepathy, you will know the ins and outs of everyone with whom you date. Nobody's saying telepathy. Nobody's saying magic. Stop fucking dismissing the other ways that you can get consent. You see how they do that? You must get. You must be talking. You can't get it through intuition, magic and telepathy. Nobody fucking said you can, you fucking clueless cunts. You've never had sex in your fucking lives. And this is not some, oh, oh nah, nah, you're a virgin, you don't know what you're talking about. You really do not fucking know what you're talking about about God's sake man I, I'm surprised women aren't all over this as well saying oh hang on a minute I don't want a man asking me every two fucking seconds God I don't even want him to speak do you think women who want to have sex with David Beckham want to hear him talk get the fuck out of here man uh, kiss have sex etc that's silly every person that you encounter in and out of the sack will be radically different and you have no way of knowing what turns them on and what turns them off. But you know that every one of them want to talk about it though. Right, it's funny how you know all this, isn't it? When it comes to sex, we are not robots. <clears throat> there is not a universal on switch. Each one of us has a different body with its own unique landscape of desires and responses. This is, this is women talk. This is just women talk. We've got all different bodies, each with its own unique landscape, desires and response. Oh, fucking get your knickers off and shut up. And that feels good to one body. And what feels good to one body might not feel good to another. 
That's what makes sex so fun and exciting. Well, if it's fun and exciting, why are you trying to drain the fun and excitement out of it? If sex was the exact same thing every time we did it, it would get boring fast. You fucking want it to be the same every time we do it. Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? You even said fucking, if it's your girlfriend. Fuck's sake. So skip the wondering and march straight into good sex by saying all those things that have been anxiously going over in your head. Out loud. Aye, because that's guaranteed to have good sex. They know what good sex is. What is consent anyways? <gasps> consent is a verbal agreement uh, about how and when people are comfortable engaging in a sexual act. Yes, we know all this. Uh, this agreement can be made through a quick check-in or a longer conversation and the sexual act can mean anything from kissing to going all the way. Thanks for clarifying that. Fuck's sake. I was clueless about that, so I was. Say it out loud. Why does consent need to be spoken out loud? Can't you just know what someone wants by the way they look at you, dance with you, or kiss you? Well, you think, wouldn't you? Doesn't talking about sex take away the fun, the mystery? Sometimes. Yes, it does. Talking about sex doesn't take out the fun, but it, uh, to you, to fucking you, the people who haven't had any, but it does take out the mystery. Often the unspoken mystery of what's happening in your partner's head, or what's happening in your own head, leads to unwanted sexual experiences. <laughs> you can think you know what they want by that look in their eyes, and be dead wrong. I'm sure they're capable of saying, whoa, whoa, don't do that. You know, I'm sure they're capable, rather than having to go, can I do that, can I do that, can I do that, maybe if they don't like something they can just go, whoa, don't put that there. You know what I'm saying? Fucking hell. And the same can happen to you. Your partner might misread the looks you send their way. And if they do misread the looks that I send their way, I'll simply correct them and say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, no, I don't like that. Don't fucking do that again. If you feel too awkward to ask your partner about their boundaries, chances are they feel too awkward to bring, up on the, bring it up on their own, in which case it's likely that their boundaries will be crossed. Rape, 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 rape. That's all they think about. Ask first. Everyone and anyone engaging in sexy business can bring up consent. Whether you are initiating or receiving, you have the power to make the consent check-in happen. However, some people are more responsible than others. Before you do something to someone else's body, touch their junk, grind on them, take off their clothes, etc. Yes, I think I figured out what you meant when you said before you do something to someone else's body. I kind of figured that out for myself. God. It is your responsibility to make sure that it is okay with them. If you don't ask and just assume that the look in their eyes means that they want what you're giving, you could very well be perpetuating an unwanted sexual act and harming your partner. Surely if it was an unwanted sexual act, they would fucking say so. Just, again, it's, we're talking about women. They just don't give them any agency at all. We're talking about feminists here. They don't give women any agency at all. Conversations. If it's the first time you're hooking up with someone, it's good to have a longer conversation. You'll want to know what their boundaries are, what safer sex looks like to them, and what their preferences are. Generally, a good time to have the conversation is when it's clear that something romantic and sexy is about to happen. In other words, the optimum time to kill the mood. But before you get into business, here are the things to cover. It's the absolute optimum time to kill the fucking mood. When you think something's going to happen, you know, stop. Let's have a conversation about sex. I'd like to know what your boundaries are, you know, because if we all do this, then women eventually will get tired of men. They'll somehow, I don't know, magically turn into lesbians, and then there'll be more for these feminists, you see? And then if, if we put women off men by men constantly going, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And women don't want to have sex with men anymore because they're so fucking irritating. They keep talking and asking all the time. Uh, it's like begging for fuck's sake then eventually we won't have a family unit destruction of the family unit the feminist school you see uh, aye so here's here are the things here are the things to cover boundaries never make assumptions your partner might be comfortable having oral sex but not comfortable having vaginal sex you might be comfortable having sex on Tuesday but won't feel like it on Wednesday and what about anal what about anal the fuck are you asking me for? Protection and STDs 
Talk to your partner about standards for using protection and then follow those standards. You may be accustomed to using condoms for vaginal or anal sex without realising that some people also use protection for oral sex. It's just like we're a bunch of fucking children, man. You might want your partner to get tested regularly. Your partner might be comfortable not using condoms with you, but might expect you to use condoms when you have sex with other people. Decide what everyone is comfortable with and set clear guidelines which will be denied as soon as she says you raped her anyway. You know, then she'll just say, we didn't set any guidelines. I don't know what he's talking about. I was drunk at the time. I don't remember. Therefore, he's a rapist. And he wasn't able to read my knickers. After you have had a conversation about safe sex, it is easier to follow your safe sex practices to pull out that dental dam when you're all hot and bothered. What? Again, these are the things you must do before you enjoy sex. You won't enjoy sex unless you do it the way we say so. Fucking let adults have sex for fuck's sake. Preferences. Many of us have had the experience where the sex that we're having is almost the sex that we really want, but not quite. And instead of asking for what we want out loud, we silently hope for it. That's your fucking problem. We hope that she will take off her pants or that he will keep kissing down her neck and down her stomach and down, down her... Well, you get the point. You mean vads, right? That's what you meant, wasn't it? Why do you just fucking say that, you child? And we are too shy to just say, is it okay if I sit on your face? Too, too shy to say fucking vagina in the last fucking sentence, but now then I just blurt out, can I sit on your face? For fuck's sake, man. Chances are you don't know everything that your partner wants and they don't know everything you want. Yes, but when people get together, they find these things out through experimentation, or do you want to stop that as well because experimenting might be rape or something? Ask your partners what their preferences are. What types of sex do they like? Do they like penetration, oral sex, dildo sex, anal sex, hand jobs? What feels good? Well, to the people writing this, probably dildo sex. The exciting thing about this conversation, oh, it's very exciting, I'm fucking, it's riveting stuff. I'm at the edge of my seat. Is that it's ongoing. Our sexual interests change and peak as we grow and develop. Your partner might get exciting ideas that will spice up your sex life. And if you have good communication, then you two, or you three or four, can explore each other's bodies in infinitely expanding, hot, great, consensual ways. Consensual. <laughs> all about check-ins, or all about, can I take off your pants? Once you've had the basic consent conversation, the, the, the obligatory one, this will be mandatory by government in California soon. Uh, you can use, uh, with someone you can use check-ins. Check-ins are important because one moment of consent is only good for that moment. You see, they want you to keep asking, asking and asking and asking. Did I get consent for for touching you there earlier? I can't remember. Can you give me consent again just so that I can touch you there? How, 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 how to, these, this should be called how to dry a woman up in a matter of seconds. Fucking hell, man. Just because someone has had sex with you once does not mean that they'll want to have sex with you whenever, wherever, for the rest of their lives. Duh, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. But somehow that insane assumption gets made all the time. D uh, what are you projecting here? Don't do it. Keep asking your partner what they want and keep telling your partners what they want. That way you'll kill any desire to have sex with each other and hopefully will destroy the family unit completely and more women will be lesers. Ooh. You and your partners have already established good communication. Now you two just need to keep it up. What does that look like? Before you do something to your partner's body, ask them if they're okay with it. See? Like, can I take off your pants? Do you want me to sit on your face? You're obsessed with sitting on cunts faces, I swear to god man, dildos sitting on faces, it's obvious what side of the fucking road you're driving on. Can I lick you? You get the idea. You meant pussy didn't you? That's what you meant right? You meant pussy. Check-ins can be simple, fun and sexy questions that lead to more consensual and more exciting sexual rendezvous. Aye, it certainly can lead to, lead to more consensual and exciting rendezvous because when you're going, uh, can I do that, can I lick here, can I kiss there, can I rub there, can I touch there, can I stroke there, the woman then goes, oh for fuck's sake, I'm away with that other guy that doesn't fucking do this and then has better sex with him. Oh, well fucking done. Right, now we've got some um, models. I should say models. Now, Victoria's Secret, the people who run the show, they've probably gotten 
you know, in league with these feminists in order to cover their own ass, you know, so that they don't get accused of being all about rape culture. But they know that these knickers are not going to sell. They know that they're going to kill the mood. And they know that any woman that wears them guaranteed to accuse a man of rape, right? So they've not put their best models forward <laughs> for the job, right? <laughs> Here's the first one, right? No means no. She's wearing the knickers that say no means no. You can barely see the knickers because the fat stretched over them. But, um, aye, no means no. How sexy is that? When you finally get to the knickers, if you can find them under the fat, it says no means no on it. R instantly, as soon as you see those knickers, you know right away, shit, I'm going to get accused of rape. Oh, no, that's my life ruined, man. <sighs> The next one's, again, hideous model. Uh, let's talk about sex. That's what it says on them. Let's talk about sex. And that doesn't even really... Doesn't, it doesn't really come across as, uh, get consent from me. It's, it looks like, I don't know, salt and pepper and knickers or something, you know? Um, these ones here, guaranteed you're getting accused of rape if a woman is wearing these ones. Ask first. Right? If you see a woman with these on, uh, get away from her. Just get away from that woman because she's well. Even if you, it's, it's probably too late anyway. Because you've been in her company for three seconds, so you're definitely going to get accused of rape. Uh, and the next ones, oh god, um, totally hideous. Consent and and a love heart, you know. Consent. I mean, it's just uh, it's it, a total mood killer. That's what that is. A total mood killer. These one, this is probably the one of the best models they've got, even though you can't see her face. Uh, consent is sexy. Aye, it's it's totally is, isn't it? It's totally sexy. So I was constantly getting constant consent for every fucking thing that you do, and then she can just deny it. And the, oh, for fuck's sake! Oh, that is just hideous. That's hideous. Now, you, you know that they know these aren't going to sell, otherwise why would they be using this model for these? I mean, that, that is just fucking, that's like Jabba the Hutt or something, that's disgusting, man, get the fuck out of here, man. You wouldn't, you would hope to not even get to her knickers to read that it says, I love consent. God. Ah, she's okay. Uh, talk to me. You see, she's one of the hot models, right? So she's took a look at all these knickers and she's went, I'm not fucking wearing them, are you crazy? I want men to actually find me attractive. I don't want them to be scared away from me because they'll think I'm going to accuse them of rape. Eh, uh, oh, I'll take those ones, talk to me ones. They seem all right. They don't seem like too uh, false rape accusation-y, you know. Because uh, talk to me, again, they, they don't really... You get down to the knickers and it says talk to me on it. You don't think, hmm, she's going to accuse me of rape. It's just kind of... Blah, nothing. So that's why she's picked on. She's one of the top ones, and you know she she gets first pick of what ones she wears. Then we've got uh, this one again. I love my body. Well, that's very good. It's good that somebody does. I mean, you get to that again. You get to the knickers. I love my body. Yes, very good. Can I get a shot? Fucking hell, man. Oh Jesus, fucking Christ. There we go again. Fat ass again, right? Look, it say. I mean, it says on her knickers. <laughs> Listen to what I want. <laughs> listen to... We don't need to listen to what you want. We already know what you want. Chips. Fuck's sake. Or another kebab. Christ almighty. Then we've got ones that say respect. Again, one of the kind of better models. She picked them first. You know, she got... She was one of the first picks. And she thought, I'm taking those ones. At least that doesn't say I'm going to accuse a man of rape. But still, hideous, you know. What's on your mind? Another another good model picked those ones because again, it's not exactly saying I'm going to accuse you of rape, you know. Um, but the the whole idea, the whole idea of, of this, I can't believe Victoria Secret have been on, have went on board with this. Victoria Secret of all people. I mean, I would expect fucking I don't know some cheap shit, Marks and Spencers or something like that because they're all about feminism right now. Um, to be on board with this shit, you know, love consent. Get consent for this, get consent for that. And I think it, it would be like, it would turn a woman from the uh, the Nile 
into the Grand Canyon like that by constantly asking for consent. Can I do this? Can I do that? Eventually the woman's going to say, I'm going to fucking shut up and just do it. Fuck's sake, just fucking do it, man. Christ's sake, if I don't like you doing something, I'll fucking say, don't do that. I don't fucking like that. How can that not be the rule? Wouldn't that be easier? Then the guy doesn't have to constantly go, oh, can I do this, can I do this, can I do this? And they try to make it gender neutral, but it's not. It's fucking not. It's clearly written by lasers. Dildos, dildos, sit in your face, sit in your face, lick vaggies, lick vaggies. Yes, we get it, we get it. You're feminist lesbians and you hate the family unit. We understand that. Fucking hell. But uh, my advice to any guy who sees any woman with these knickers on, it's too late. You are going to get accused of rape. So as soon as you see the knickers, I'm out. Get your phone out, get a video, and say, let's take a wee selfie together. Just the two of us smiling. Yay, how about a little video together? Hello, right, I'm going now, bye-bye. And film her as you leave her apartment or as she leaves yours. Bye-bye. Make sure you get her on camera, being happy when she leaves, because it might help you when the, you know, the police come calling. Unless, of course, the feminists manage to bring in a new rule, which they will, that uh, rules out video evidence in court. So even when a man has that, that'll be ruled, that'll be dismissed from a, a court as well. <laughs> but then we've always got the internet, we can put it all over the internet to show that the internet that at least we're innocent, even though we're in prison. Anyway, uh, I'll leave it there for now, because this is just crap. So just do anything to take the fun, even trying to take the fun out of sex. It's the one thing we had left. Let's drain the fun out of that now. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time. You've taken the fucking fun out of that as well. Piss off. God. But this one, a uh, sure thing, you know. So uh, if a woman chooses to wear them, because she's wanting them, she's buying them, she's choosing to wear them, she's encouraging rape. This is what happens when feminists do anything. They take the fun out of it. They, they destroy it. And they turn it all into rape. Everything. No vagina is a sure thing. Ask first. Yes, no fucking cock is a sure thing either. You fucking ask first. The problem, do we even need to say it? Printing the slogan, sure thing, literally over women's vaginas. No, 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 no. It's on the knickers, it's not on the vaginas. You know, literally, D don't use that fucking word. Because when you literally use that word like that, you literally sound like a fucking moron. It's not on the vaginas at all. It's on the thing that's covering the vaginas. Fuck's sake. It sends the wrong message. I know, it sends this wrong message that they're just having a bit of fun in their sex lives. How fucking dare these fucking rape apologists, scum women do that? In what situation in life is a vagina treated like a sure thing? We can think of one. Rape. Oh, well, of course you can think of one, rape, because that's all you ever fucking think about, feminists. Excuse me, uh, do, do you have the correct time? Rape! Do you know when the bus, the next bus is due? Rape! It's raining today. I thought it was going to be sunny today. Rape! The solution. No vagina is a sure thing. It doesn't matter if that person slow danced with you all night. If that woman is your girlfriend. If that man is in your bed. Man? Vagina? If, that, if there's a man in my bed, he better have a fucking vagina. If your date is drunk. We believe that in every situation, every time, everyone gets to decide what happens to their body. Well, it sounds like you get to fucking decide what happens to everybody's fucking body. Don't treat people like a sure thing. Ask first. This is, set, this is Victoria's Secret. This is Victoria's Secret. I seriously think this will hurt their sales. One of the main reasons that sex remains taboo in our culture is that we are not supposed to talk about it. Says who? Although sex is everywhere, discussing sex openly and honestly is still rare. To you? In some situations, that makes sense. For example, sex is usually an inappropriate topic for the family Thanksgiving dinner table. You don't know my family. Hi, thanks for listening. Um, what's the worst thing? The worst two things that could ever come together. That's right. Feminism and Victoria's Secret. It's happened, right? 
this is this is real, by the way, right? Because um, I thought it was a joke at first. It's not a joke. Feminism and Victoria's Secret, hand in hand, the two worst things to come together since the last two worst things to come together. Anyway, it's um, Pink Loves Consent. Join the consent revolution. It's a revolution because we've, we as humans have never done that consent thing before, you know. Pink Loves Consent is more than a style. It's a revolution. Pink Loves Consent is our newest collection of flirty, sexy and powerful statements that remind pink panty wearers and their partners to practice consent. Whew, thank fuck for that, because I forgot all about that consent thing. It was me just going around just raping random women. And <sighs> thank God for, for these people getting together like this and reminding people like me that you have to get consent. Consent is a verbal agreement. Say it out loud. No body language. About how and when people are comfortable having sex. Aye, and how to make them not comfortable is to openly ask for consent. Ask first. No means no. And let's talk about sex. Remind us that communication is the key to good sex. Pick your favourite slogan or write your own. Whatever you do, remember to practice consent. Remember, you must have the sex the way we want. Then, we loved styles that were all about rape culture. Now, we love styles that are all about consent. Catch the changes hitting stores this holiday season. You see, then we loved. Now, we love. See, because they, they speak for everyone, you know. But they've got examples of uh, what we used to love, because that was rape culture, and what we love now. You know, because, again, we can't think for ourselves. We have to be told what we love, right? What we used to love was the ones that said, no, then and now, no peeking, right? Totally harmless. Now, no means no. Seriously. I mean, look at, look at that. A pair of knickers with the words no means no on it. You know? I mean, can I do that? Can I do this? And can I do that? And what's great about doing that is not only does it completely kill the fucking mood and make her not want to have sex with you ever again, but it can be completely forgotten about when she just decides to go, ah, uh, he raped me. But, but you gave me consent 53,000 times because I kept asking like a fucking lunatic whether I could do different things or not and you said yes all the time. No, I didn't. I don't remember that. You're a rapist. So th this doesn't actually prevent false rape allegations or, or rape. Any woman that wears this underwear is going to accuse you of rape, whether you're a rapist or not. Although, although apparently, according to them, it's going to prevent rape. So they'll, they'll, they may get caught falsely accusing you of rape because they'll go, but you're on it, I was wearing this underwear, and the judge is going to go, hang on, that underwear prevents rape. Therefore, you couldn't have been raped. The sexy benefits of good communication. When you're having sex with people, you can spend a lot of time wondering about what they're thinking. How do you know if they want to kiss you? How can you tell if they like what you're doing? Are they thinking what you're thinking? Do they want more? How do you know what they want? You ask them! You know, there's other ways. You know, there's noises, for example. You know, just, just for example. <laughs> It's no, nothing, they just drain the fun out of everything. Just out of everything. It is a complete and absurd myth that good sex happens without talking. No, it's not. That's not a myth. You've never had sex before. This is classic, this is just like the Christians, you know. People who do not have sex, not Christians, priests and stuff. People who do not have sex telling everybody else how they should have sex. The people who do this and organise this stuff, they've never had sex before. Because oh, if they did, they would know that this constant need for consent would kill them out. They would know this. And they would know that in most sexual encounters, no verbal consent is given. None at all. It's all body language and actions. Fuck's sake, man. 
that through intuition and magic and maybe telepathy, you will know the ins and outs of everyone with whom you date. Nobody's saying telepathy. Nobody's saying magic. Stop fucking dismissing the other ways that you can get consent. You see how they do that? You must get, it must be... To However, the taboo against talking about sex sticks in situations where open conversations are not only appropriate, but also necessary. People who are having sex with each other need to be able to talk about it. They're just making rules for people's sex lives. But somehow many of us are more comfortable sleeping with someone, you mean having sex with someone, than talking to the person that we are sleep having sex with about sex. This is nobody's fault. It is ingrained in our sex-obsessed, sex-negative culture, leaving many people horny and confused. To move ourselves towards more healthy and self-actualized sex, we need to practice communication and consent. Self-actualized sex. I have to be honest, right? I haven't got a fucking clue what that means. I haven't got a clue. I don't know if I've been having self-actualized sex or not. Good sex is about good communication. Communicating our boundaries, needs and desires is hot. S seriously? Are you, you're telling us it was hot now? Is there any chance, just any chance at all, we adults can decide for ourselves what we think is hot? We need a sexual revolution that makes practicing communication as ubiquitous as using a condom. Condom use was promoted for sexually active people in response to the AIDS epidemic in the 90s in order to prevent the transmission of HIV. Today, communication needs to be promoted among sexually active people. It needs to be because they want it to be. In response to the epidemic of rape. Epidemic of rape. Epidemic of rape. Epidemic's one of the feminists' favourite words. Rape, assault and sexual violence. See, because there's an epidemic of rape, assault and sexual violence, you know. And, and there is in gender studies classes. Not in the real fucking world, there's not. In order to prevent unwanted sexual experiences, because if you wear knickers that say no means no, you won't be raped. Because a rapist will get to your underwear and go, oh no. She said no. Ah oh, well, sorry, I was going to rape you. Turns out you're wearing that fucking indestructible underwear that I can't get past. You fucking clueless cunts. Just like pausing to put on a condom prevents STDs and a woman, eh, you know, getting child support from you for the next 18 fucking years of your life. Pausing to check in with your partner prevents unwanted sexual experiences. And nothing, nothing makes a woman hotter than pausing every fucking minute to say, can I do this? I was with a woman and I got down to her knickers and they had that written on it, I would immediately turn into a, a David Bannatyne off Dragon's Den. I'm out. Right away, I'm out. Get the fuck out. Get out. Get away from me, man. Because if a woman is wearing a pair of knickers that say no means no on it, you are going to get accused of rape. I guarantee it. Get the fuck away from her and don't let her near anything in your life again. Because you're going to get accused of rape. But your honour... It must have been rape, because I was wearing these knickers, and it says on them, no means no. Brilliant. When it comes to sex, words like no are for setting boundaries, not flirting. The problem, across the country women are saying no and not being heard. Really? <laughs> Maybe it is because people, men and women alike, think, that yes, we know what people are. Thanks for clarifying that, but I think we can fucking suss out what people are think that words like no are for flirting and don't have much meaning. Who, who, who are you talking about? Stupid people. Kinda like the no in this no peeking pair of pink underwear. Cute, right? It's cute when young women spoke the word no as an invitation. It's cute when young women learn that pretending to not want sex is a way to flirt. Cute when their partners learn that no really means yes. Just young women. Is it just young women that wear these things? Yes. Right. And, and the no peeking could be... Um, literal. Maybe it's just as bad as these fucking consent ones, you know? God. The solution, the solution to people having a bit of flirty fun with their underwear is a boundary is not an invitation to try harder. It is something to be deeply heard and respected. Words like no and stop are not ways to flirt. If, not ways for you to flirt. 
If you want to have sex, go for it, but you must do it the way we want you to. Precisely, exactly the way we want you to. Otherwise you're a rapist. You don't need to pretend like you're not into sex because you're a woman. And if you don't want to have sex in any situation, that should always be respected no matter what. No means no. Oh, man. There's another pair of then and now. Then, it says, sure thing on it. Now, ask first. I mean, how sexy is that? How much is that going to put a man in the mood? Oh, down to her underwear, ask first. Oh, for fuck, don't go away. Just, thanks for fucking taking the fun out of fucking sex. For God's sakes, the one last thing we had left where we were allowed to have fun.